Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the lab coat's on back order, and I'm here once again in Uptown St. John, New Brunswick, at Heroes Beacon, the comics and collectibles store, where we have our local Pokemon League. We are here today for the pre-release tournament of the new Pokemon TCG expansion of Ultra Prism. So if you're not sure what a pre-release tournament is all about, of course we're going to step inside. As per usual, I'll show you what the rundown is like at one of these pre-release tournaments, so you know what to expect if you're going to go to one in your area. And we're going to see a lot of these new cards not only in the collection, but on the battlefield. So without any further ado, let's go check out some possibly new uh, Prism Star cards from this new expansion and see what all these players happen to get. The Pokemon TCG pre-release tournament is a special event held at Pokemon Leagues throughout North America. At these events, players can pay an entry fee set by the league organizer and obtain a special pre-release pack containing a 22-card pack one exclusive foil promo card, and four booster packs of the newest expansion coming out up to two weeks before the expansion officially goes on sale in North America. The 22 card pack forms a basic core of a custom deck containing Pokemon of two different energy types, including some evolutionary chains of these Pokemon, along with a number of trainer cards. The foil promo card will correspond with one of the Pokemon types in this 22 card pack. The four booster packs are your standard random assortment of 10 additional cards from the upcoming expansion. Once the league organizer announces it's time to begin, players will then have 30 minutes to open all of their packs and construct a 40 card deck comprised of just those new cards, along with any basic energy cards they require which will be provided by the league organizer. While the normal rules of deck construction state that a deck may not contain any more than 4 copies of any particular card, that rule does not apply to decks constructed during a pre-release tournament. That means that if you happen to pull 5 or more cards with the same name out of your 22 card pack and booster packs, you can include as many of them in your deck as you'd like. The tournament then gets underway with each player testing their newly constructed deck against one another. The matches are shorter than in a regular tournament with only 4 prize cards per match. A participation prize is awarded to all players who complete the full tournament and that prize is an additional 3 booster packs of the latest expansion. Something important to note regarding pre-release tournaments is that after the tournament concludes, the usual rules of deck construction apply to this particular expansion, which means these cards are not permitted to be used in play Pokemon events until the third Friday of the month in which this expansion goes on sale. After that, you're free to use these cards and include them in your custom decks however you'd like. Let's go check out a match and play here at the Ultra Prism pre-release for Pokemon TCG. So the battle is getting underway between our two opponents here on the battlefield at the Ultra Prism pre-release tournament for Pokemon TCG. Player number one leading off with Electabuzz and Oranguru on their bench as player number two. If you can see through the glare, and I don't blame you if you can't, we have Lickitung in the active spot with a Rotom Wash and another Lickitung on their bench. And player number two is taking the first turn, attaching an energy to the active Lickitung. I believe that's all they're going to go for. That's all I have access to right now. Now, in the future for our pre-release videos, I'm going to see if I can have a specific table set up just for recording so we have minimal issues with glare like this here. I do fix up the camera later on in this footage, so stay tuned. You'll be able to see what's on the opposing side, or on, I guess they're both opposing each other, but on player number two's side. So, it looks like player number one plays a nest ball from hand, getting to search their deck for a basic Pokemon and putting it right onto their bench. Now, with the pre-release tournaments, you tend to get a fair amount of basic Pokemon in your 22-card pack, plus all those booster packs that you happen to open as well. So there's a lot of options available. Let's see which Pokemon that player one decides to opt for. They go for a Young Goose, because as you'll see when they uh, play it from their hand next turn, they do have the evolution in hand. Now, it's not quite the uh, Gumshoes that we've seen before from the base set, which was a GX. There is a different Gumshoes, but we're going to see some pretty cool action from that at some point in this uh, particular match. So, they can attach an energy, which they do, throwing an electric energy onto their Electabuzz. Not quite powered up enough yet to use its low kick attack, but one more energy will do the trick. Speaking of one more energy, player number two attaches another water energy to their Lickitung, which can now use the first attack of Lap Up, which lets you draw three cards. You know, it doesn't do damage, right? But being able to additionally draw more cards than just the one per turn is pretty decent. So player number two, or sorry, player number one begins their turn by evolving Young Goose into Gum Shoes. And as I say, we'll take a look at that Pokemon in more detail. Once it becomes active, it is going to happen. I've seen this video. I've seen the battle. I know what's going to happen. But you guys don't. You're on the edge of your seats, I'm sure. So, I believe we see another energy being attached to the Electabuzz in the active spot. Once the uh, player decides what they're going to do for this turn, there we go. Two energy now on Electabuzz, allowing for the low kick of 30 damage. Now, Lickitung has 100 hit points, so the low kicks are going to take quite a while to bring it down. But let's see what player number two has up their sleeve. 
for their next play. I believe they've already drawn their card for the turn. They're going so fast I can't even see it happen. They add a Cresselia onto the bench, which has some pretty interesting attacks. And again, we'll see those in action at some point. Attaching a Psychic Energy to their Cresselia, getting it powered up and ready to roll for when it becomes active. And I believe they just opt for... No, wait. They actually play a Trainer card. As I say, I think they opt for the uh, Lap Up attack, but nope. They're going to play a Timer Ball, flip two coins, and for each Hedge, you get to search your deck for an Evolution Pokemon and put it into hand. There's a Hedge right there. The second flip is made. It's going to be a Tails, unfortunately. But fortunately for player number one, player two only gets one Evolution card from within the deck. And here is the problem the way the camera angles. I can't see what it is. You can't see what it is. The opponent does, or uh, player number two, sorry, does show it to their opponent, but we can't see it. So, rest assured, they don't even play it. They do eventually shuffle their hand away, so no big deal right there. Didn't help them on the uh, the very first turn that they got that Pokemon into play. I don't, I don't know if they would have a Licka Licky in the uh, 22 card pack. Maybe. Not sure. Anyway, they just opt for the lap up attack, drawing three more cards for the turn as player number one begins their turn. Now, they could power up the Electabuzz for some more damage using. I'm not sure the other name of the attack. Unfortunately, all the card images that I do have available are not all English, so some of them have to be the Japanese original art. And I can't read Japanese, but they just instead opt to power up the Young Goose, or sorry, the Gumshoes, and allowing for. I like to buzz keep going for the low kick, another 30 damage, two more hits, and the active Lickitung will be fainted. Knocked out some of the discard pile, and of course, the first prize on player one side could be claimed. Now, player number two drew their card. They are going to attach an energy to their Cresselia. I can predict it. I know what's happening. See, I'm psychic as well right there. And we're going to see a trainer card being played in just a moment. It's an interesting new card. I'll show it off right here. Uh, it works pretty well with some other cards in this set. So it is Cynthia, of course, a supporter card. Shuffle your hand into your deck and then draw six cards back. Now, you'll see, we'll talk about more, well, I guess, talk more about that in a little bit when we see another Pokemon in play. But for the time being, Cynthia, I'm wondering, is she just gonna be a simple, basic replacement for Shauna? Now, Shauna was a card, a supporter card from the uh, X and Y days. It allowed you to shuffle your hand into your deck and draw five cards. Cynthia allows you to get six. Kind of a double-edged sword. If you draw too many cards, you run the risk of decking out, but uh, getting that sixth card could be the card you need to turn things around in the tide of battle. Turn the tide around in the heat of battle. I can't speak words. Just follow the images on screen. There you go. But, yeah, it's like there's always a plus and a minus to each card as new ones come out. Like, for example... Would there be any benefit to playing Bianca over Lily nowadays? I don't know, because Lily works just like Bianca, but Lily has the bonus of using it on the first turn, getting two extra cards. Either one allowing you to draw six cards. Anyways, next up, one player number two side, we see a reverse foil Piplup being played to the bench. Pretty cool. As they go for another lap up, drawing three more cards. And I believe at this point, player number one is realizing that he really would have liked to have some sort of draw support like that. You'll see he does eventually get a uh, supporter card to draw more cards, but he's just working off the top of the deck. He's not getting the best stuff, unfortunately. But he puts an energy onto the Gumshoes, which is now powered up to use its first attack called Identify, and we'll see that once it becomes active. But for the time being, Electabuzz continues the low kick assault on the Lickitung, bringing it down to 10 hit points remaining. So over to player two, they draw their card for the turn, and I believe they throw another energy down onto one of their Pokemon. You can take a guess which one it's going to be. As we wait. Now it's going to be, of course, the Cresselia. With uh, one more energy attached, they can use both of its attacks called Lunar Payback and Psychic. And they're both kind of interesting. You'll see in a little bit here. As I believe they just go for the lap up here to draw three more cards. So, in a pre-release tournament, remember, you only have 40 cards in your deck instead of 60. So the more lap-ups you do, it does give you more resources to work with, but it may also leave you closer to decking out. And I believe at the end of this match, the player, player number two, only has three cards left in their deck. So it was kind of a close one if player number one could have hung out longer. But anyway, I kind of just spoiled the ending, I think. But whatever. Anyways, player number two, sorry, player number one, I'm getting all mixed up here. 
player number one draws their card, and they're taking a look at that uh, Cresselia to see just what can it do. It's got some pretty good power behind that Psychic Attack. They probably read that right now, seeing that it does 60 damage plus 20 more for every energy the opponent's active Pokemon has. It's kind of strange that Alolan Raichu has more power behind its attack than that. I guess because it's an evolved Pokemon card, though. So, it looks like player number one just opts to go for, I believe, a low kick for the knockout. Like a tongue falls, first prize is taken, and which Pokemon should come up from player two's side? Of course, it's going to be the fully powered Cresselia. And at this point, I notice there's quite a bit of glare on the Cresselia, I think. This is where I move the camera? I'm not sure. During this part of the uh, recording, I was actually off playing a match against the player that got the buy. Now, enough about that, because we just see a Prism Star card being played. It is Lunala Prism Star. Player number two was fortunate enough to get that out of their booster packs. And here I am trying to adjust the camera. As I said, future videos we're going to aim to have less glare, so there's none of this commotion going on here. There we go, now we can see everything. It's kind of funny though, when I came back to check the camera after the match that I was playing, I saw the glare and I thought, oh boy, how long has that glare been on these cards for? Turns out not a lot, not a long time. But we see Piplup evolving up into Primplup over on the bench, and the Psyche Attack does its trick, it takes down the uh, Electabuzz, and first prize is taken for player number two side. So it's tied up right now, three to three prizes remaining. Player number one sends up their gum shoes with the energy for identify. As they draw their card, I see a nest ball in hand. Do we see that played down? I believe we do. Nest ball being used right there, finding a basic Pokemon from within their deck, of course, and benching it immediately. They're going to opt for one of the new dragon type cards in this deck. I believe it is the first one that we see there, or is that the evolved one? They do get a Gibble down. Right there, Gibble added to the bench and shuffling back up. Garchomp is going to be an interesting card. Like, it's got some good power behind it. It works in conjunction with Cynthia really well. And you'll see that momentarily. So, we can use the Gumshoes attack of Identify. It does 20 damage, plus the opponent reveals their hand. So first of all, you get to see what the opponent has in their hand to work with. But if you find a Pokemon card there, this Identify attack does 80 more damage. So it does quite a bit of power. Now, do you see the attack being fired off? I think we do. With Gibble being added to the bench, there's nothing more to be played from hand. The hand is revealed, and yeah, there's a fair number of Pokemon in there. So 100 damage done to Cresselia. Leaving it at, I believe, 30 remaining? Let me just double check my little figures here. Uh, 20 HP remaining, actually. It only has a total of 120. So player number 2 starts their turn, attaching a second Psychic Energy onto their Lunala Prism Star. Getting it powered up. We've seen this card on the channel before. Or have we even taken a look at it? I've mentioned it, I know that much. It's got some pretty good power behind it. It can... Fine. You can attach more basic energy from the discard pile. It also does the same attack that Delphox had from one of the break expansions. It does 20 damage. It's called Psystorm. 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon, yours and the opponent's. That's some good power, and that is why it is a Prism Star card. You can only have one in the deck, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but every Prism Star card says when it would go to the discard pile, you instead put it in the lost zone, which is a cool thing they had in the game at some point. They basically stopped using the lost zone, but it is now back with the power of these Prism Star cards. Not too many things can bring cards back or make use of cards in the lost zone. There was a Mew that could do this, but I'll talk about that more later because we see the Cresselia using its first attack of Lunar Payback. Discard an energy from this Pokemon, and if you do, switch all damage counters on this Pokemon with the opponent's active Pokemon. So basically, the 100 damage that the Gumshoes just did, they've moved it back onto that Gumshoes. That's kind of crazy. Very useful, though, of course. So player number one now plays a Pokemon Fan Club. It is back in the standard format, reprinted here with the Ultra Prism expansion. Getting two basic Pokemon. They realize they sort of do a technical misplay here. They're putting the basic Pokemon onto their bench, but... As they say, they were going to bench them regardless anyway, but at least they reveal them in doing this as well. So which other Pokemon are they going for? They mentioned that they had Shaman, which has a pretty good... or there's Shaman right there. Its first attack, Call for Family, lets you find two basic Pokemon and put them on your bench, which is similar to the Pokemon Fan Club, but they don't have that many basics to work with in their deck as it is, so they just got that one out just to kind of thin the deck, I guess, because as I've said before, 
in different videos, when you take cards out that normally... If you can't take the card out, whatever, but if you take a card out like the basic Pokemon, next time you draw from the top, you don't run the risk of drawing that basic Pokemon. It's already in your hand, or benched, or whatever. So it helps thin your deck, more beneficial cards could be drawn at that point. Now, I think we get to see an evolution here. Gabite evolves up into... Sorry, Gibble evolves into Gabite. And Garchomp is just waiting in the wings. It is going to be coming out in just a little bit here. And I think we just go for a simple... Identify attack. Yes, there is still a Pokemon in Player 2's hand. Therefore, another 100 damage being done to Cresselia. This leaves the Gumshoes at 10 hit points and Cresselia at 20 hit points. So player two, of course, throwing energy onto the Lunala. It does take four energy to be able to use its Psystorm attack, but once you get that four energy, you're already doing 80 damage regardless of the, uh, what am I trying to say? Regardless of the amount of energy everything else has, you're still doing 80. So herein lies the predicament of player two. By attaching the energy to Lunala, they cannot use uh, Psychic on Cresselia. They also cannot really make use of the... Lunar Payback, because if they did discard an energy from Cresselia to do so, they swap the two amounts of damage counters. They're basically moving 100, taking 100. So, Cresselia basically just has to stand there and kind of take a hit. So back to player number one, they do play uh, Electivire to evolve up their Electabuzz, and they go for the Identify Knockout, clearly doing enough damage. Even without a Pokemon in player two stand, they did 20 with Identify. And here comes trouble for player number one. Lunala Prism Star takes to the active part of the field. Here's where we're going to see some damage being done. Not right away though, as I said, they do need one more energy on Lunala Prism Star to be able to dish out the Psy Storm attack. But the first attack is... what is that called again? Let's see if I can find that card right here. I believe they're going with... What don't they do? They play Shaman to their bench. They attach an energy onto their Empoleon. Did I mention that they evolved Empoleon yet? That little bit of information might have slipped past me. But Empoleon has a pretty decent attack to it, as the player number two plays Sophocles to uh, discard two cards from hand and draw four extra cards. Empoleon has the total command attack for Water and Colorless, does 20 damage times the amount of Pokemon on both players' bench. Which seems to imply Empoleon commands the opposing Pokemon to attack their active, doesn't it? Anyways. That's just uh, random musings of mine. So we see, looks like, which Pokemon is that that was played down? I can't even make it out to the edge. Not that it matters. The priority here is, uh, the primary focus is going to be Lunala Prism Star going for its first attack, which again, I haven't seen just yet. What is that called? It is called Full Moon Star. And that allows it to attach an energy from their discard pile to one of their Pokemon. How does it work again? For each of your opponent's Pokemon in play, attach a Psychic Energy from your card, from your discard pile, to your Pokemon in any way you like. So you can attach it to whoever you want. This is really good in the sense that it's powering up Psy Storm. So they could, if they want, attach one Psychic on to the Lunala Prism Star, and attach the rest of the energy to other Pokemon. They just go for all three energies onto the uh, Lunala Prism Star. They would have attached two more if there were two more in the discard pile, but that is the maximum that they had to work with. So player number one, quite happy to have drawn Howe as their prize card to draw three more. As they said at this part of the battle, they really were hoping to have gotten Howe before this, because they're kind of in a tough spot right now, facing off against a Prism Star Pokemon. And their options are somewhat limited. Now, it's pretty safe to assume they can still use Identify to do 100 damage, and Lunala... Prism Star has a total of 160 hit points, so they could do a two-hit knockout if they could survive a Psy Storm, which is not likely. But you never know, they might, uh, player number two might decide to just go for another Full Moon Star, what is it called? I already forgot. Yeah, Full Moon Star. I second-guessed that because I thought, why would Moon and Star be in the same name? But either way, we see player number two one adding a nice electric energy onto their Electivire, getting that ready for some damage. It does need three energy to be able to attack, but with any luck, they can uh, do the damage that they need to. So they're going to do 100. There is a Pokemon in player number two's hand, leaving them at uh, 60 HP remaining. Sometimes players will put a die on there with uh, the remaining hit points as opposed to how much damage they have. 
Whichever number is easier for people to maintain control of and understanding. As long as both players know what the dice represents, though. So player number two plays a unit energy of grass, fire, and water. It provides three... Sorry, player provides one energy of all three types at the same time. And they cleverly make use of this to play Gardenia, which allows you to heal 80 damage from any one of your Pokemon that has grass energy attached. And there was a question, they did ask me to, you know, clarify this particular little thing here. The unit energy does provide grass energy onto Lunala Prism Star. That does satisfy the requirement of Gardenia, healing any Pokemon that has grass energy. So a nice healing of 80, putting them only at 40 damage total. And I think at this point, player, two, or player one says, why are you even counting how much damage? You've clearly knocked me out. Yeah, with 10 hit points remaining. But sometimes you just want to know the numbers, right? You want to see how much damage you've done. That's kind of like what I like about Pokemon TCG Online. At the end of a match, it shows you exactly how much damage total did you do. That kind of comes into play with some of your online challenges, too. All right, so over to player number one. They bring up their Electivire, which kind of can't do too much. It doesn't have the energy. And I think they realize it's kind of a lost cause. They're going to start powering up their Garchomp on the bench. Now, we didn't mention this yet, but Garchomp is pretty nice. Its second attack, if I can take a look at my own card here, is called... I do have a Garchomp here, don't I? I believe I do. There you are. Garchomp can do Royal Blades for a Fighting and 2 Colorless. Does 100 damage, plus if you played Cynthia from your hand during this turn, it does 100 more damage. Some decent damage right there. But, unfortunately, it's not going to be able to help them out anytime soon because, first of all, Lunala Prism Star takes down the active Electivire, leaving Garchomp to come up, which doesn't have free retreat cost, is a good question I would like to answer for myself right about now. It does, because it is a very fast Pokemon. If they really wanted to, they could retreat, but there's kind of no point because player number two has only one prize remaining. They can do the. Skill Dive, I think that is called. Quick Dive. 50 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon, but not enough to bring down Lunala Prism Star. It does get the knockout on the Garchomp. The final prize is being taken, and that is going to be a match for our first opponents here. It's going to be a wrap for the match. I can't speak. Now's the time to end off. Good game to both players. So it's now time to sit down with some of the players here at the pre-release and do some pack openings on video. So, how many packs do you have to open here? Five here. All right. We might just go through a couple of them because there's a lot of yeah. folks that want to burn through this. But which two? What, let's go with uh, I think two packs. I think it'd be good to open on video. What two do you want to go for? I'll open Leafeon and one of the first. All right. So let's get some good luck down there, folks. Throw some comments. Throw some likes. Throw some whatever you want to do to give some good luck to our buddy here. So there's a code card being given out for you folks. Feel free to type that into TCG Online. I'm not sure if the packs will be redeemable yet, but if you have that code, redeem it as soon as... Yeah, I don't think they are. They should, they probably wouldn't be. So we have... Yeah, I don't think they are. Let's see, Gardenia, we got Gabite, Bronzor, Dewfighter, Piplop, Skaroopy, Stunky, we have a Reverse Shaman. There's a GX in this pack. I felt Yes! Leafy on GX from the first pack. Nice. Hey, what look! Yeah, from the Leafy on pack. No, that was the pack. Oh, okay. The Valio I opened. Oh, okay. Yes, the card I wanted. I wanted Glaceon and Leafeon. And we saw that on the channel when we did the uh, little bit of a news update thingy. So next, another code card for you folks there. And we find the pack trick, first of all. What card are you hoping to find after Wait, seeing that? I, I saw something interesting. Gabite, look for it. Yes! We got the Giratina Whoa. Prism Star. And a Shaman. And a Shaman. Two for two. So which of those two cards do you think is the better? Thanks, Anderson. And now coming in next, let's see. You can do uh, two booster packs if you like. That's all that I have. Alright, so we got two more booster packs. Is it like a out of No. So, how'd you do in the tournament today? I lost like all the rounds and then I get an infinite win because. Oh, the, uh, the buy? Yeah. Okay. And then I get Magnemite, Chirby, uh, Benary. No. Ooh, I. Pepper Glalie. Psychic Energy. This. That. Never walk any in that. And that's that? Now the next pack. 
Let's see if we get some good luck for this pack here, everybody. I already did pull um, four Fenomosa in Rainbow. Wait, I'm going to do the pack trick, so. Okay. Let's see what we can get. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then fan. Oh, fan rope. That was kind of cool. But, dude, you did pull an amazing card, though, didn't you? Two pretty cool cards. Can I show off the end that I bought or that I got? Sure thing, yeah. So we have... And he picked up the Entei GX from uh, the Singles Binder. Very cool. I really like seeing that full art Faramosa. So which two will you go with? So we have a, yep, Giratina. Yeah. That is true. So we have a Cyrus Prism Star. But that's not all. The Valley GX. Another Sil Valley GX. Is it the same attacks? It is. So Sil Valley GX is back in this set again, which is cool because I've seen a couple more memory cards are added to this. I'm looking forward to that in the online game. Mm. It's pretty cool cards to get. Too bad there's no Sil Valley GX Ultra Prism Star kind of thing. Yeah. All right. So the next pack is Sol Galio, the uh, Dusk Main. So that was a bad pack to open for the first one. Yeah, well, uh, that's a cute. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Roland Doug Trio. What's that? Ancient Crystal. Regi Rock, Regi Ice, Regi Steel, or Regi Gigas. This card is attached to. Takes 30 less damage from your opponent's attacks after applying weakness and resistance. It's kind of nice. I like Hard Charm, but better, but only for specific Pokemon. Okay. So what's your favorite card that you just pulled out of these packs here? Ooh, I would say it's a tie between these two guys. I would think from that first pack, those two really awesome rare cards. Mm. Pretty cool stuff. So which two packs do you want to pop open? I have four. Yeah, we don't have time to get two of them opened up right now, though, because there's still more people to get through, unfortunately. I'll start off with Salgalia. All right. Or, um, so let's see what we happen to find. Snowburn. <laughs> <laughs> Sand Slash, Bastion, uh, and I have it. And it's Earth and Shield. Prevent all damage done to um, done to your poke, done to your Steel Pokemon by attacks from your opponent's Pokemon that has any special energy attached to that. Okay, nice defensive. Yeah. Order pad. I've ne have you ever seen an order pad? No, this is a new card. What does it say? It says, flip a coin. If head, search your deck for any item cards, reveal it and put it into your hand. Shuffle your deck afterwards. It's kind of nice. It's like you're placing an online order. Yeah. And what's that card there? Inferno. Oh, I thought it was the Infernape. That thing has a lot of power to it. And the unidentified fossil, which is interesting. It doesn't say exactly what evolves from that fossil, but something. It's everything. Yeah, it's, it shows every kind of fossil. So I wonder if they're going to like replace regular fossils with that now. Is it like an item? And I'm going to be happy because I got this, and I was playing. And I have sh shield on, but I don't have its first fossil. Actually, Only yeah, as you say. If you had like the uh, the baby shield on form, we could see what it evolved from. Yes. But you have one more pack you're gonna open on the video, so you could get one of those fossils. Yeah. Hopefully, I get another. Let's see what we get. Once the pack decides to open, there we go. Okay. We have there's a Cherubi, there's a Baneri. Hippopotas. First of all is a Drift Blim. We have a Shaman. Energy. Are you being nasty? And another Drift Blim. Nothing too crazy from that one. 
Yes. Alright, so did you do good in the tournament today? Uh, yeah, I got a win, a tie, and a loss. So you did pretty much one of each. Did you have fun? Yeah. Awesome stuff. My name is Johnny. Oh, hi. hi. You can say hi to the uh, that camera over there too. <laughs> hi. So we so. have a two ultra sudden ultra person pre-release boxes after I won this beautiful tin from the code card draw. Very nice. Beautiful. Anyway, so time to open this one. All right. Excuse me, by the way, I farted. So we got us a Leafeon pack. Leafeon Let's see. Pack thingy. Murkrow. Gibble. Jupiter. Stunky, you know, the Buck Skunk, Turwig, Riolu, Mo Ro but I got another Roll Tom form. This, 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 who the heck is Mars? That's from Team Galactus. I haven't played much of Platinum, so yeah. Lopany, and I got a Manaphy. Oh, I'm repeat Manaphy, you're running away from this thing. Yeah, I feel bad for Manaphy. Alright, so. We have our code card. I didn't get anything that good besides just Manaphy, of course. Yeah. Now time to open the Giratina pack. We've seen some cool Giratina stuff in this set already. Yeah. There was a Giratina Prism Star, I think we saw. Oh yeah, I hope I get a Prism Star. So we got our Samanda here, a Turtle Wig, Turtle Twig, Riolu, Krogunk, Eevee, Bronzong is my um, reverse. Fro Another Rotom! Rotom is everywhere in this set. Everything. Steel, Looker Whistle, Crane Pull Up, Pokemon Fan Club. The fan club is back, cool. So I didn't get that many good cards. I got two freaking Rotoms. Yeah. Why am I not surprised I got two Rotoms? I, but well, why? <laughs> why? Why Rotoms? Why? Did you have fun in the tournament though? It was one of the best things I've done in my life, especially since it was my first tournament ever. Awesome stuff, glad you liked it. And glad you had fun. So we got a couple more booster packs. Which, you got three here, but which two do you want to open up? Because we're almost out of time. Okay, I'm going to open these two. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we can get out of here. I'm going to quickly open this. Uh, yeah. Are you really, though? Doesn't seem to want to work. There we go. Oh, there we go. So we find... Oh, I can see something. Oh. That's kind of decent. Yeah, that's good. And you got a bomb of snow. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the uh, was a skateboard. I think it's called. Best Pokemon ever. A bomb of snow. No, this is. This is. Oh. Moral. Okay. Yay. Yay. But now you've used up all the. Well, let's not say bad luck, because those are some nice Pokemon and a code for you folks out there. Hold us steady. There we go. All right. They can pause the video and grab that if they want to. I'm gonna put that right there. Okay. Let's keep on watching that. And now we got one last booster pack. Let's see oh. what you get. Yay. Yay. Ooh, Rilu. Ooh, Manaphy. Yeah. Manaphy's at a Yon Mega? Oh. And who's that guy? Um, yeah. Uh, Faulkner? One of the, is it, he was a... Uh, yeah. Is that Gen 4? I don't know. Um, okay, from Hoenn, or Sinnoh. And now it's time to grab ourselves a seat and see what cards I get out of my own pre-release pack for Pokemon TCG Ultra Prism. So now it's time to open up my pre-release pack of the Sun and Moon Ultra Prism expansion as people try to distract me off camera. Let's get a mention in the video. You go ahead and laugh all you want. It's not going to change the fact that I'm getting the best cards out of this pre-release pack. These guys, I tell you. Anyways, let's take a look at what they have for the right up here. This is, of course, the information that you need to read. It's the important stuff. Stop whispering about me back there. I see what you guys are doing. Anyways, unknown new dimension. You guys can read that if you like. We're just going to flip around. Pre-release tips, of course. If you haven't been to one before, you can get some information on how to do your pre-release pack, your pre-release deck, whatever you want to do. And let's see what we get. Now, I've seen this Lucario promo card. This is the promo that it came with the 22 card pack. This ability, Precognitive Aura, is kind of nice. Once during your turn, if you have Garchomp in play, you may search your deck for a card and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. So you choose any card you want from the deck, take it. It's pretty cool. And Missile Jab does 70, not affected by resistance. So let's see what we get from this pack. And by the way, you're noticing there's a code card here right now. Of course, as always, we're doing a code card giveaway for Ultra Prism for a chance to get yourself some of these online codes. So, just going to answer the question of the day, and that question is going to be, which card from the Ultra Prism expansion 
do you think is the coolest and why? Just answer that question down below with the hashtag QOTD. Have a chance to win one of these code cards when I do the drawing just in time for the release on February 2nd for this new expansion. So for the time being, this card goes to the side. And let's take a look at what cards I got for my 22 card pack. So first there's Lucario. We've got Empoleon. I heard a lot of good stuff about this Empoleon. Total Command does 20 times the amount or 20 damage times each bench Pokemon on both sides, which is pretty good. A lot of people kind of lost their Pokemon to that attack. Whirlpool does 90 and discard an energy from the active Pokemon. So we've got a couple of Print Plup as well. We're going to kind of speed through some of the more basic cards, I guess. It's cool there's two different kinds of Pip Plup in this set, though. Very interesting. We have Pokemon Fan Club is back. Search for two basic Pokemon and put them into your hand. We've got Lily once again. Draw a card so you have six in hand, but if it's your first turn, you draw eight. Timer Ball is here as well. We've got Shaman. Call for family. Search for up to two basic Pokemon and put them onto the bench. You can also glide for 20. There's that Garchomp, so this is a pretty good uh, set of cards to get for the pre-release pack. Quick Dive does 50 to one of your opponent's Pokemon. Royal Blaze does 100, and if you played Cynthia from your hand during this turn, 100 more damage. So you can do a nice clean 200 just by playing that one supporter card. Got some Gabite. Ooh, Ascension. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this Pokemon to evolve it. You can use that. Uh, basically, you can evolve from Gabite, or from Gibble to Gabite, and then attack with Ascension to become Garchomp right away in just two turns. Ascension, there, oh, really? Gibble can ascend as well? That's kind of crazy. There's Riolu, we have Cynthia. This is a great pack to get. I could have won the tournament with this stuff probably. And there's Lily, Nest Ball, and Spirit Tomb. The Lightless World, put two supporter cards from your discard pile into your hand and Terrify for 10. If the defending Pokemon is a basic, it can't attack during the opponent's next turn. So that is the 22 card pack that I got, but Let's take a look at the random booster patch. As you see right here, I got one of each. I'm thinking we're going to save the, uh, the Necrozma options for later. We're going to open up the Leafeon first. Let's see if we get any Pokemon GX or any Prism Star cards. I'll see, I'll see if I have anything that has any record of it. <laughs> Say hi to Ron, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he's the other professor here at the Pokemon League, and he's just as professional as me. <laughs> alright. What are you laughing at? Oh, we're all just a big bunch of goofballs here. It's all cool. Yeah. You didn't sneak. I saw him coming. Alright, so can I actually open this properly? Now, here's the question. Do you think I can do the pack trick properly? Because I always forget how to do it, but then I sometimes remember, but sometimes I don't. So, again, code card to the side. These are the uncommons, I believe. I think this is... The rare? I don't know. Hang on. Let's go like this. If I'm right, this should be the energy card. I'm probably wrong. I was wrong. That's the reverse foil. It's Drompa. So Outrage does 20 plus 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. And Dragon Pulse does 100. Discard the top two cards of your own deck. Ow. Next we have Glamia. That's a common. We've got Snover. We have Magnemite with, what is this, Solid Unit. Also, we're not focused. One second here. So, Solid Unit. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, prevent all damage done to it by attacks. We've got a Murkrow. They're all over the place in Pokemon Go. Carnivine is here. We've got the Alolan Dug Trio. I've heard some people are looking for this one. Gold Rush for no energy does 30. Discard any number of metal energy cards from your hand. This does 30 damage for each card you discarded in this way. Interesting. Doesn't take energy to attack either. We have the escape board. This is interesting. I saw someone pointing this out. It is a Pokemon tool. The retreat cost of the Pokemon this card is attached to is one colorless less, and it can retreat even if it's asleep or paralyzed. Okay, I didn't read this right the first time, but even while it's asleep, did you guys hear that? Yeah. It can retreat. How is that even possible? This should be the hoverboard of Pokemon. Great Scott. All right, next we have here with Wonder Guard, sorry, Weather Guard. Your Grass Pokemon have no weakness. That's kind of nice. What card is this? Energy. What card is this? Is this the rare? Uh, yeah, looks like it. It's the Dangerous Stinger Drapion for 100 damage. The opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned. Of course, with the Escape Board, they can still retreat, which would be kind of nice. All right, so what pack should I open next? I got two of the Necrozma, and I've got the Giratina. Giratina. I'm thinking Giratina. I want to save those uh, legendaries for later on. So let's go ahead and tear this open. You guys think I'm going to get any GXs or Prism Star cards? Hopefully so. Alright, so code to the side. 
So these were the un were these the uncommons? Yeah. <laughs> I never know how to do this trick off the top of my head. I'm gonna say that might be the energy. No wait. Let's go like this. Alright. Did I do it right this time? No. Reverse foil again. I can never do this. Okay, we got a swagger, crow gunk, we've got carnivine. We've got Buneary. There is Passimian, I've heard about this one here. Power huddle ability. As long as this Pokemon's on your bench, your Passimian's attacks do 30 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Active evolution Pokemon, sorry. Rock Curl does 40, unaffected by resistance. We've also got Chimchar. Cute little Chimchar. We have a Lickitung. We have Bronzong. That is the un one of the uncommons. We got Fire Memory. This is interesting. Now, I was talking about my Soul Valley GX deck using the Weavile with Tear Off, I think it's called, or Tear Away. Being able to take tools off of your own Pokemon, you can put a different memory on your Soul Valley GX and change its typing however you like every turn, which is kind of cool. You can become Fire. I saw there's an Electric Memory, and Psychic and Fighting are currently in the Crimson Invasion expansion. Next, we've got a Grottle. I think this must be the energy. Nope, it's the Empoleon. Another one of those. Not bad. Good power with that total command. And the rarest card of all, we've got fire and fighting energy. Almost said fire. I did it backwards. Alright. What do you guys think? Lunala. The Lunala. But 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 Moon was my first game. But Ultra Sun is what we're currently playing, so that's a good one to save for the last. So good call. Alright, let's try this trick once again. I can't even open this pack, right? Looks not. I've never had this much trouble opening these packs before. Okay, grab me the cards. Slide away the code card. So, these should be the uncommons. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is reverse foil. I know that much. This must be the energy. So that's going here. Let's try that. If I did it right, this is the energy. I did it! Maybe. Let's see if everything else works out okay. We have a common lick tongue. There is Execute. We've got Cosmog, which is back. Moralol. And the last common, I believe, is a Drifloon with Creepy Wind. Very creepy. Uncommon cards beginning with Yon Mega. Weird, this Yon Mega has a retreat cost. Most of them don't because they're so quick. We've got a Volkner. Search your deck for an item card and a Lightning Energy card. Reveal them and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. We have Cranidos which evolves from Unidentified Fossil. We saw some Unidentified Fossil cards. Weren't sure exactly how does it evolve into a, a Fossil Pokemon, but looks like this one evolves from that specific kind of uh, almost like a basic Pokemon in play card. Reverse Foil should be, look at this, we've got Unit Energy, which is cool. It provides colorless energy, but while it's attached to a Pokemon, it provides Lightning, Psychic, and Metal Energy, but only one unit of energy at a time. So it's kind of cool. Three different types of energy. The rare card is going to be Salazzle with Panic Poison. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now Burned, Confused, and Poisoned. It's a lot of stuff. That would uh, work well with the Alolan Muck GX doing more damage. And Hunter's Nails for 60+. plus. If your opponent's active Pokemon is affected by a special condition, 60 more damage. Alright. We haven't got any Ultra Prism Star cards yet. We don't have any GXs. Is this the pack that's going to find me one, guys? It's Sogalia. You have to trust Sogalia. I have to. Otherwise, what's the point of me playing Ultra Moon on my videos, right? Yeah. My luck is going with the legendary of the Ultra Sun game. Did I say Ultra Moon? I messed up. All right. How did the Patrick work again? Did you say Patrick? The Patrick. No, this is reverse foil. So I'm going like this. I think I got it. I think I got it. There we go. Yeah. Darkness energy. We've got Skorupi. We have Gibble. Dewpider. Last common card is going to be a Shinx with evolutionary advantage. If you go second, this Pokemon can evolve during your first turn. Cool. Uncommon starts with Hippopotamus. What is it? 11th hour tackle? I love the interesting names of some of these attacks. If there are three or fewer cards in your deck, this does 130 more damage. It's kind of nice. We also have a Purugly, <laughs> the attack called Own the Place, <laughs> for 20 damage. If your opponent has a Stadium card in play, discard it. If you do, prevent all effects of attacks, including damage done to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. So you own the place and are basically immune next turn. We've got another unit energy, not the reverse foil, still decent. We have Rotom. I've seen so many Rotom, but this is the first regular one that I've seen. 
Roto Motor, if you have three or more, sorry, three, where did I see three? We've had nine or more Pokemon tool cards in your discard pile. Ignore all energy in the attack cost of each of this Pokemon's attacks. Plasma Slice does 120 and it can't attack next turn. Reverse Foil is going to be Toxic Croak with Poison Jab, which poisons in 30 damage. Exact Revenge does 50 plus. If any of your fighting Pokemon were knocked out by damage from an opponent's attack during their last turn, this does 70 more damage. The rare card, this is it. What do we see? Rotom! A fan Rotom! Uh, Roto Motor as well, and Spinning Fan does 20 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon. But you have 9 tool cards discarded to be able to use that for no energy. It's a lot of tool cards to lose along the way. But I think one of our guys has a plan, he was saying, for how to make use of that. So I'm going to have to talk to him off camera at some point. Alright, I actually have three additional booster packs I'm going to be opening up for this video here too. So we got some more code cards available for you folks to grab. Bear in mind that, of course, the setting has changed because I got these after the event, but they are still good. So we have another Leafeon, we got uh, uh, Duskmane, is it, yeah, Duskmane Necrozma, we also got the Giratina, which is a Prism Star card. So let's open up the Leafeon, I think, and see what we get out of this booster pack right here. Okay, so code card to the side, of course. Now, how did I get the pack trick again? I believe... Like this. Let's try this. All right. Hopefully, I did it right. We're gonna see. Didn't do it quite right. We have the uh, no basic energy. We have Shinx. We got Pissimian. Next is a Hippopotamus. I think these are the uncommons. No, these are common. Interesting. Okay. We have a Baneri and a Cherubi. This is Reverse Foil. So we have Bastiodon with the. What is that? Earth and Shield. Prevent all damage done to your metal Pokemon by attacks from all of your Pokemon's or your opponent's Pokemon that have any special energy attached to them. Cool. We've got a Gabite. We've seen that in the 22 card pack. We have a Gardenia, which we saw in the uh, match itself. Heal 80 damage from one of your Pokemon that has any grass energy attached to it. I think this is the energy card. Nope. Printplup. Bubble Beam for 20 and Wave Splash for 40. So this is the energy? No, wait a minute. I messed up a bit. We got Psychic Energy, we have Obama Snow with Blessings of the Frost. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach a Water Energy card from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. Hypno Hammer does 80 and puts the opposing Pokemon to sleep. Alright, so that is pack one. Let's open up... let's go with the Giratina next, I think. That'll be our second pack. We'll save the Duskmane Necrozma for the last of these three additional booster packs. And these would be, like I said, the three kind of packs that you would get for completing the tournament at the pre-release for the uh, new event. The new expansion, I'm trying to say. All right, so get that code card off to the side right here. Okay, can the professor perform this pack trick once again? I know these are the uncommons. This might be the energy here. I'm gonna put it on top. We'll switch these two around. Did I do it right this time? Grass energy. I think I've got it figured out once more. Cherubi. We've got Electabuzz, Turtwig, Cosmog, and last common is Roselia. So the uncommons, I believe, starting with Lopany, Stompy Stomp for the attack, 40 times, flip two coins, 40 damage for each heads. Happy Turn does 60, and you may shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it back into the deck. Interesting, we have a Mars, draw two cards. If you do, discard a random card from your opponent's hand. Not bad, you're gaining two cards. Costing the opponent one of their cards. Pretty cool. We have a Drift Blim with Damage Teleport. Move four damage counters from each of your Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon. Nice power right there. And Wind Wheel does 80. The opponent switches their active Pokemon to one of their bench Pokemon. Reverse Foil is going to be a Glammeon with a Gentle Bite for 10. And the rare card of this pack is a Rampardos. A clean hit does 60 plus if the opponent's active Pokemon is evolved to do, uh, six, do 60 more damage. Not sure why I got stumbled up on that one. Stum stumbled up on the word as well. Wild Crash does... Wait, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic, it's knocked out. That's some good power right there. A lot of the uh, GXs are currently basic Pokemon. Last booster pack to open up is the Duskmane Necrozma. Can we get some Prism Star or GX luck out of this one? It's not looking so good thus far. Let's grab the code. And secret that off to the side, of course. Let's do our little pack trick here. Did I mess it up yet? I 
think I figured it out. I think I caught it the last second. We see a Darkness Energy. We've got a Cherubi. There is Electabuzz, Turtwig, Cosmog, and Roselia. Uncommon cards. We're starting off with a Grottle. We've got Cynthia. Shuffle your hand into your deck, then draw six cards. We've got a Manaphy. Deep Currents. Shuffle five Water Energy cards from discard pile into your deck. Water Pulse does 20, and the active Pokemon is now asleep. Reverse Foil is Rotom. I believe we've seen that one. And the rare is going to be a Toxic Croak, and I think we've seen that one as well. So, no Prism Stars, no GXs. Bad luck on my side, but at least we saw a lot from the uh, players at the Pokemon League pre-release tournament. So that is what I got out of my booster packs, and of course for your chance to win one of these code cards, including the one for the 22 card pack, just leave a comment down below and let me know which card from the Ultra Prism expansion do you think is the coolest and why. And just include hashtag QOTD in that comment, you have a chance to win one of those code cards when I do the drawing just before the set comes out on February 2nd of this year. So stay tuned for that. And Hopefully I'll get some more cool cards along the way. I didn't get any Prism Star cards. I wanted at least one. I wanted to get at least a GX. But maybe in the online game I'll have better luck along the way. So that's going to be a wrap for our video coverage of the Pokemon TCG Ultra Prism pre-release tournament here at Heroes Beacon. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you guys attended a pre-release tournament in your area for Ultra Prism, feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know how things went for you and what cool cards did you happen to get and what cool cards did you see the opponents get and what kind of cool strategies have already started making their self known in this new expansion. So that's going to be it for today. I want to say thanks for watching, of course. If you enjoyed this, feel free to leave a like down below. Feel free to share this with any friends of yours that might want to see some Pokemon TCG pre-release action. And if you want to see some more videos that I have done, check the links during the outro. You can also subscribe to the channel for some more daily Pokemon content from Professor Chaz here. But with that, I think it's time to get going and review these cards and start coming up with some kind of kooky strategies as I tend to do and see what sort of pre presents itself for the online game coming up on February 2nd when this set does go on sale. With all that, it is now time to sign off. Professor Chaz is out of here. Thanks again for watching, folks, and I'll catch you next time.